Listen up, partners. This is Good, Bad, Ugly on World Improv Network. Good evening, everyone. I am Alex. My name is Asa. I am Jim. And we are your astute wind counselors to get you through the week with any problems that you might be having or any daily grind issues that you currently want addressed. Let's go to our first winner. Our first winner is Jamal from Atlanta, Georgia. And Jamal writes, Dear Wynn, who's the sexiest comedian of all time? <clears throat> I already got the answer. I'm looking right okay. at him. Two guys right in front of me. <laughs> Hands down, the sexiest comedians of all time. Um, Enough said. Uh, Alex, pick one. One of us is sexier than the other. That is true. He did say sexiest. He didn't say comedians. He did say just comedian. Yeah. Uh, comedian? Uh, yeah. E N N E or comedian? I A N. I N. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Thanks for putting me on the spot, Tim. Yeah. Maybe we had well, to uh, I need to know which of us you like more. I still have <laughs> leftover hard. Guys, I'll be right back. I go to the bathroom. Uh, well, okay. Right. Uh, uh, I'm going to say for my money, it's Stephen Wright. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I respect any man that can rock a skullet. All right. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say of all time, huh? Charlie Chaplin. Ooh. Well, that's kind of weird because he looks like Hitler. Well, and he played. All right. Well, hey, what's the next question? Hey, what's up, guys? I just got back. <laughs> what, what are you into, Asa? I, what's going on? What are you... I'm into answering winners' questions. <laughs> okay. What did you guys talk about while I was gone? Uh, nothing. We were just anxiously waiting to know which of us was sexier. Okay. Well, eyes. our next winner is Nadia from Saint Petersburg, Russia, and she writes, "Dear Win, do you think the Russian government is to blame for Flight 9268 that just crashed in Egypt?" Hmm. Well. What do you think, Ace? I mean, you have a good connection with Vladimir Putin. You know him pretty well, and he's been up to some yeah. nefarious stuff with shooting down planes over the Ukraine and so on, and the Polish president and everything. Yeah, I've uh, mm -hmm. collected a lot of clippings from newspapers, looked at a lot of blogs. I've really investigated the psychology of mm -hmm. Putin. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't put it past him. Let me say that. I wouldn't put it past him to, to be responsible for that. What we'll, would we'll be the motivation here? Just to try to drum, uh, drum up some, you know, side note publicity away from Syria or what's going on in Ukraine, kind of a thing, a diversion tactic, basically. Uh, I think it. I think it might be a a, a plea for help. Oh. I think he might be in a really rough spot right now, mm -hmm. and he's he's. This is just a cry for help. Oh, it's lashing out like Justin Bieber or something. Yes. Oh. Huh. Well, uh, I think what we really need to do is go back to what Lenin said. And look at who will benefit from all of this. And in this case, I think that's clearly the news media. Okay. So I believe the plane was shot down by the news media. Oh, that's If brilliant. there was even such a plane. Right. It might not have even existed at all. Exactly. It could have been a fake plane that they threw it across the desert, came up with a great story. Yeah. You know? That could all be a movie set. Yeah. Just it, like the moon landing. Yeah, exactly. And you know what? And I kind of thought mm. something, yeah, the moon landing, I mean, I was thinking not necessarily a conspiracy, but actual fact that aliens did it mm. because they were flying to Egypt, right? They were close to Cairo, you know, not too far away from the Giza Plateau where the pyramids are, mm -hmm. which of course were all built by aliens. Yes. And they probably didn't want to see the Russians see the pyramids, so they shot the plane down. I, that, that makes a lot of sense to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just, I mean, to me, that's clear as day. I can't believe it's even a point of discussion, to be honest with you. Bottom line, not Putin's fault. Not Putin. Hashtag not Putin's fault. Not Putin's fault. Hashtag. Okay, we'll 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 start a campaign on that. Tweet that as well. Mm -hmm. Make okay. a tweet of that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, there you go, Nadia. All right, our next winner is Virginia from Colorado Springs, and she writes, "Dear Win, with all the school and law enforcement shootings go shootings going on these days, do you think it makes sense for Donald Trump to let people know that he's often carrying a gun for his own protection?" Is that true? Well, he, yeah, he said it the other day on TV, actually. <laughs> Yeah, he says, that he often carries a yeah. gun around for his own protection. Yeah, he has it concealed and stuff. Like at the debates and stuff? Oh, man, that would be cool. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> oh. Do you think if he becomes president, he'll use the Secret Service? Uh, or do you think he'll, like, hire out? You know what? I think he's going to hire out, like, uh, you know, like a private force, like Umbrella from Resident Evil. See, oh. this is that separation of state and money. Yeah, that <laughs> business and state. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I don't think, I think he would use the secret service, but I think he'd update them a little bit to like, 
like robots, like me- like oh mechanical God. suits. Terminator. Yeah. Yes. Oh, gold oh, lame mechanical suits. That'd be suits. sweet. <laughs> RoboCop stuff. Yeah. Uh-huh. But all in gold lame. Hell yeah. And he could pay for it. It's not a problem. Mm-hmm. And that'd be great. It wouldn't cost us anything out of our budget. He can just pay for it out of his $10 billion that he has. Yeah. Huh. And then we could replace all the cops in schools with uh, robots. Robot cops. Yeah. Yeah. Robot cops. yeah. That'd be a great idea. And we can have them all like, talk like Arnold Schwarzenegger and kindergarten cop. Now, when you say replace, you mean we would actually do like a body switch so their wives and children and families wouldn't realize they've been switched with robots. An alien abduction, basically. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. A, a real switcheroo. Mm-hmm. Just another page out of the Putin playbook. Yep. Fumble Ruski. Uh, hashtag not Putin's fault. Not Putin's fault, I Yo, you can't just, you can't uh, excuse his behavior with conspiracy theories, you guys. Um, It's in a hashtag now, so yeah. it's the truth. Well, I'm going to start another hashtag that says, uh, boot the poop. That's a good hashtag, Ace, but it's too late because Jim already put it out there, and so he's first to the party, Jeez. and so it's already propagating across the internet. You're never going to be able to catch it. All right, well, up. I'll find another hashtag. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, of course, we got to your answer there, Virginia. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Donald Trump packing heat, whether or not that's a good idea, given all the law enforcement and school shootings that have been going on. Uh, uh, like, yeah, because guns don't beget violence. No. No. It's only violence that begets violence. Is is she asking like should Trump be one of like I, she, a I think she's asking guy? whether or not she should tout that he you know whether or not he should tout it, mention it, even discuss the fact that he does carry a gun from time to time for his own protection, given all the sensitivity right now with gun violence. You know. Well, I think for someone running for president, you know, you can't please all the people. No, that's true. But he's going to please the people that care about guns. That's true. So that's what he's going to say. And he's going to please the people that I guess he believes is the honest statement to. You know, uh, I mean, he's not a sugarcoater much. That's for sure. Like him or hate him, he right. does not sugarcoat much. So right. I believe him on that one. All all right. Right. Well, all right. Um, <laughs> we beat that one like the dead horse. So let's go on to Larry from Denver, Colorado. And our winner, Larry, says, Dear Win, who is going to win, no pun intended, between the Broncos and the Packers on Sunday night football? Well, uh, 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 you know, this is a tough prediction, don't you think, Jimbo? Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's just it's a real even even playing field right now. Um but I'm going to go out on a limb and say the Packers. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think they're going to win it on a on a safety as time expires. <laughs> safety as time. the yeah. punter running out of the end zone <laughs> yeah. as time expires? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be the most <clears throat> thrilling game in NFL history. Yes. Absolutely. The last play of the game is the punter running out of the end zone for a safety to lose <laughs> <laughs> on purpose and avoid from getting a touchdown. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I got. I think I got the inside scoop here because I rubbed the ball uh, before I came down to the studio. And I'm going to have to go out on a limb and I'm going to have to go with the Broncos. Gross. Well, you know, you got to get the answers. Okay. You know, but and the rest, the other people have to use these mics. I'm just saying. It's true, but not till I don't know when the next show is going to be. At least for another fifteen minutes. Okay. So I mean, come on, Broncos are going to win. Uh, they're going to win by. Oh, the Packers are going to score, bring it within seven. The Broncos are then to go back down, kick a field goal, they win by ten. That's your that's your answer right there, in my opinion, Larry. What do you think, Ace? I'm going to say the referees are going to win. Are you seeing these calls? Mm. My goodness, <laughs> just great form out there. Excellent. Yeah. And the stripes. I mean, they wouldn't even like blur at all under the camera lights of the stadium at all. I mean, that's amazing. That's well, how- they're blurring the lines with their calls. Yeah, yeah. Oh, if you know what I mean. Uh-huh. Robin mm-hmm. Thick style. That's right. Yeah. They're, they're cheating on their wives. <laughs> <laughs> that's always a good idea there, Larry. Uh, take that advice. All right. Well, we got our next winner, Tommy from Boston, Massachusetts. And he writes, Dear Win, what do you think is good debt? And what is bad debt to have? Wow, financial oh. question. We should ask Donald Trump that one. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I, I think uh, good debt is debt that you get when you're trying to make yourself better. You okay. know, and bad debt is when you take out loans to buy drugs like crack. Huh. But what if you think crack makes you better? Uh, well, that's just a, a wrong-headed opinion. <laughs> what if you're... Don't act like crack is so bad! That's right. It's not that bad. One for a bad for like Lawrence Taylor or something. You know, I mean, if you're gonna win Super Bowl rings behind your drug use, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Who cares? As long as you get results, I don't care how you do it. 
Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, I guess, gentlemen, I have ethics and standards, <laughs> and uh, that's what differentiates me from uh, the animals. Mm. I would that say I'm looking at right here. Well, you know, it's savage at least. Good debt, without a doubt, is the one that doesn't cost your life. So if you make a deal with the devil, or you make a deal with like a loan shark, and they're threatening to kill you, that's a bad debt. If you make a deal with a higher power and it doesn't get you anywhere, it's still a good debt because you don't have to pay it. Uh, I think good debt is a uh, debt to friends and family. Uh, the people nearest to you because then they'll always be available for you to pay back your debt hopefully and then uh bad debt is uh not that okay well there you go that's <laughs> i don't want to get too technical hard hitting well, yeah, analysis we, we, that's right we don't want to get too technical here because we want to leave you with one more little piece of inspiration well, to get you the rest of the week and that's known as horoscope corner love fortune status let us do your astrological chart horoscope corner on world improv network Hey, what up, Leo? I don't know if that's your real name, but that's what you're going by today. And you're going to have a pretty crappy day unless you turn things around. Go to the World Improv Network YouTube page. Watch some videos. Like us. Check us out on uh, Twitter at World Improv Net. Send us suggestions for the show. Check us out on Facebook. There's a World Improv Network group. Like that group. Get on iTunes. Look up the World Improv Network podcast. Leave a review. Subscribe. Download. Leave some stars. And check us out. Every single week, Sunday nights, 8 p.m. here on Mile High Sports Radio, 1430. And you'll have a better day. We're out. Thanks for listening to Win on Mile High Sports Radio. Don't forget to be a winner and interact with the cast by sending your suggestions or questions for each show segment throughout the week by hitting them up on Facebook at World Improv Network, on Twitter at World Improv Net, or by calling into the Mile High Sports Radio studio line on Sundays before or during the show. See you next week.